Hello everybody, KXE here, and today I got a bit of an overview of a prototype I've been working on. Uh, so I originally got the idea from Phenomen. Uh, his, I seen one of his recent videos, which was a, a self-propelled monorail system, and I really like the idea of the monorail because I haven't seen them in Minecraft for a very long time. Uh, people haven't been making them because, well, they are a bit slow, but they are pretty cool in how they function. And so, I saw his video, but it's a self-propelled uh, monorail system. So it was pretty bulky, or actually his was very compact, but it's still a very large system. And it can only go one direction because it is uh, self-propelled, so it relies on the block in front of it to start propelling itself. So I thought, why not try to compact it and make it a fully functioning uh, monorail system that could go both directions, have stations, and so on and so forth. So uh, basically, I got the idea of using the super notch elevator, but just lay it on its side. So here's my first design which implements the shifting redstone uh, clocks that time it. And I basically just have it where it passes the signal from side to side so the timing matches up. So if I pull this lever you can see the piston worm starts shifting along and it can get passed from side to side. And so it just keeps going until it reaches the end then it comes right back. And then we could just shut it off and stop it. So this worked and all, but it's not all that nice and decorative. Because when your game push along, you have a big opening right here. And you have shifting redstone blocks over on this side. So it just doesn't look all that great. So I got the idea to add repeaters next to the shifting redstone clocks. So now I have a whole bunch of repeaters here. And what that allows us to do is you actually put the uh, cart on top of the track which has the repeaters next to it and what that allows us to do is we can now actually decorate the track however we want and that way it doesn't look all bad and you could have a very nice looking monorail system so as you can see uh, it's all contained within this little trench right here and if I pull the lever you can see it goes all the way to the end and then returns so this system worked pretty well, and over here you can see I have a extended version which goes on uh, longer. But let me show you how this one works. Basically the second to last repeater here goes forward to this piston. So this first system right here is the clock. It's the only one with a fully functioning system that could work on its own. And then from there, it basically just daisy chains, and it will pass the signal to this side. This one will extend, it'll pass the signal to this side, and it could go on forever. So this is the uh, system, this is what runs it all right here. And then from there on, it just kind of passes the signal along. And so this worked and all, but you could see it caused a little bit of lag, and it just wasn't quite compact enough. So, uh, here's our next signal. Basically, I tried to figure out a way to take the pulse or the clock of the pistons, which this was my original prototype here. It basically makes a clock out of the pistons, which is fast enough to uh, operate the piston worm. So, I took that idea and I actually found out that if you just use a comparator clock, it is just as fast as the uh, piston clock and it works very well so right here I just have a comparator clock it is permanently powered right here and then I have a lever here that is overriding the system to keep it on and so we basically just have max length of redstone that goes up to here and then you go two blocks back to this one and you just put repeaters down below uh, you have to put two repeaters at single tick each and then you put the redstone on top which powers these two repeaters so no repeaters are being left unpowered and then when these go through it comes to this side and it powers it at the same uh, timing 
because this is two ticks which the clock is two ticks so it ha keeps the same timing and uh, so this one is pretty interesting because you could power this system from you could put a cart on the top or on the side which gives you quite a bit of leeway on how to build the monorail system and you can see it goes along the floor uh, without any hiccups and it just goes all the way to the end oh after it goes a certain distance it actually starts unloading it's kind of weird uh yeah so you can see it it's fully functioning and it comes all the way back here and let's just shut off there so now what i did is i took the same system uh, if you look at the fr footprint here it is three wide and four blocks tall so it is 12 blocks per section along the uh, length and so each time you add a section it's uh, 12 blocks so if you're looking at this for compaction uh, this is the smallest one right here if you look at the footprint it is four by two and then the cart doesn't really count because the cart moves along the track things like that so the footprint of it is four by two which is 12 or eight blocks so it is uh, slightly smaller than that one and is probably one of the most compact ones you could get out there. And then what I did is instead of adding the cart on the top, I put it on the side. And what this allows us to do is quite a bit. Uh, so for the cart, how I have it set up is I have a piston worm right here. Then I have a solid block. Then I have a redstone block. Then I have a a non-solid block which is like uh, tracks, trap door, fence gate, fence, a half slab, anything that you could basically stand in and get pushed along the track as you're standing in here but it can't be a block that could get crushed so it can't be air it can't be uh, like a flower or a tree things like that or like a sapling uh, things that could get removed or crushed by pistons it has to be a solid block, which uh, a, a minecart track can get pushed by other uh, blocks if they're getting pushed by pistons. So this one just worked out about the best. And so, I, like I said, I have the worm right here, a solid block, redstone block, then track, and then I have it basically just mirrored. So you have a redstone block, solid block, and then another piston worm. So you can see if I press this button, uh, what will happen is the resume blocks are to tell if the uh, the cart is at the station. So if this my cart is here, or if this uh, resume block is here, it will power below it to here, and it actually overwrites the system and it gives it power so it cannot flicker, and that way it gets stuck, and that's how it docks at the station. So then when I press this button, this uh, piston right here will extend which blocks the signal and it allows it to flicker which allows the cart to dislodge itself and it goes along the track so if I press this button you can see the cart moves along the track and both of the worms one of the worm isn't pushing the other one they're actually both moving simultaneously that way none of them are trying to stop the other one or counteract the other one they just move simultaneously at the same time and it makes the minecart system work very well together and so right here you can see it uh, stopped again so I have another redstone block here on the opposite side which does basically the same thing uh, it activates this block here goes down below to a repeater which comes back up to here and it disables this section right here that makes the uh, cart get stuck and then I have the same system where you just press a button and this piston extends. And so let's write it back so you can see how uh, nice it is to write in it. And so you can see it's not really like pushing me or glitching me into walls. It rides very smoothly. And yeah, uh, that's about it. And uh, I didn't really cover this, but uh, if you saw this one where I have it go over to power the last few and under to power the rest uh, this one basically I just go one block from the last and then one block out then I have a one tick repeater here one tick repeater here so that's two ticks before it goes to this one 
and then I have a one tick here and one tick here so that's two ticks before it reaches the rest so everything is at a zero or two tick pulse and that way the timing stays uh, perfectly the same and it doesn't interrupt it at all uh, that's pretty crucial to make sure that each section is either zero ticks or two ticks apart because the clock here is two ticks so if the clock is two ticks and then you have a two tick delay between sections it will make it where the timing matches up correctly and it makes it where it will transition from section to section without any mess up like any hiccups and it will just move smoothly from each of the sections and uh like I stated before, each of these uh, systems are expandable and you can make them however long you want them. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.